I'm Ellen McCauley, and I'm at Pray It Up in Syracuse, New York, and we just finished our second week of session 21. And I did the food logs for the first week of session 21, and it was very interesting, very, very interesting. Uh, we're really kicking some weight loss buff this session already. First of all, those who returned did extremely well over the holidays. And last week, the first week that I did the logs, we lost, as a group, 91 pounds, which is very, very good. I know what people are waiting for. I'm waiting for it, waiting for it. And we only gained, and I say this, 16 pounds, which isn't bad. So we lost uh, 53 pounds that first week. No, we lost more than that, but we were 22 pounds in the hole from the week before. So we're so far, it used to take us a month to get out of the hole. That's how big our hole was. So now we're, because there's no Ponzi scheme here. I can gain it, I take it back. So we're minus 53 pounds, which is very good. But the logs were very interesting. And people might be looking at them saying, how dare she take that stinking red pen off her? <laughs> Who does she think she is? Does she live my life? Does she know what I was going through that Friday night when I had those five pieces of pizza? <laughs> Anne's right. She is annoying. She's annoying. Here's the point I'm trying to make, everyone. The circled items are little tips are little suggestions. They're a little like mac and cheese for breakfast. Really? <laughs> <laughs> or things of that nature, you know? Or eight pizzas of pizza and 24 rings. Really? <laughs> no one wrote that. I was just testing you. But anyway, here's something else. They're suggestions. And you might say, I lost three pounds and she circled bread, 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 bread. Because you're not always going to lose three pounds, and if you know, want to know what to give up, I suggest you give up the bread, 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 bread. If you're having a bagel and a sandwich and, and two rolls for dinner, whoa, that's a lot of bread. Also, if you're having eggs and fruit, you don't need toast. I said it. I said it. You don't need toast. If you're having cereal and orange juice, you don't need toast. And so I'm trying to break you of the habit, and that's why I circle it. Also, what I find interesting is people think that they can write really messy, and that way I won't see that it says donut. But you see, I am really, really good at reading messy writing. I have a magnifying glass, and I'm like, I think that says donut. When in doubt, I'm going to circle it, so you better write clear. Also, the contracts were very interesting. I thought they were very realistic, for the most part. No, almost all. And I think if you make a promise to yourself, if you say to yourself, I am going to change, I am going to do this, we can have the most successful session ever. And that's not the end all be all. I, I, you think I'm going to go in front of the whole Holy Family Church and interrupt Father Mano? Excuse me, I'm interrupting your sermon. We just had the most successful prayer of something ever. <laughs> it's not for bragging rights for me. It's for the health of the entire group. Also, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit on the back of the food log. I want to thank Kathy, who I don't think is here tonight. She had to work. But she gave me this prayer. Thank you, God. Dear God, thank you for loving me so much. Thank you for your living, breathing, life-giving word. Help me to crave it as I crave food and drink. Amen. 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 But here's the thing. Do we crave the Bible like we crave food and drink? Okay, Whopper with cheese, Bible. Pick, you know? I think a lot of people do not crave reading the Bible. And I'm going to talk a little bit tonight and how you can get more use to really getting into reading the Bible. So I'm going to go right to the first article for the night. And you might say, this is a religious article. It's titled, You Become What You Eat. But 
just like our bodies need energy to keep our bodies going, our souls need hope to keep them going. When our body needs energy, we eat food, but when our soul needs hope, what do we feed it promises? Jean said tonight, there's a lot of emptiness in a person's life if you think after death there's nothing. But we believe that there is life after death, and that's called hope. That's called faith. And the promises of that hope and faith are in the Word of God. And part of hope is you can't really be hopeful about the past. The past is, is over. And you can't be hopeful about the present because you're living it. So you're hopeful about the future. We haven't achieved our weight loss goals yet. It's not June 7th. We're hopeful that we will get there. Our future is promising. Our soul will be hopeful. And if our present's miserable, maybe we hope it'll get better in the future. So we eat promises from the Word of God, and our soul digests them, believes them, and that converts to hope. We're talking about the Word of God tonight because we have to understand that do we believe it? Do we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Do we believe he took our sins on? Do we believe he died? Do we believe that? And if we do believe it, are we living our lives in such a way that we can hang our hope and our lives on that? Both physical and spiritual nutrition are important because we always become what we eat. We must take greater care, though, in what we feed our souls because so much more is at stake. I've gotten to the point now, if I'm watching a TV show and I don't like the direction it's going in, if I feel it's really immoral, if I feel like, oh, it, it's a, I turn it right off. I say to Bob, are you liking this? He's like, no. I go, me neither. There's whole series that we used to think were funny and we don't even watch them anymore because they're just not what we want to feed our souls. We want to feed our souls things that make us hopeful for the future. Also, junk food, and there's junk promises. Junk food is addicting, and so are junk promises. There are promises that, oh, if you just live this lifestyle, you'll be happy. You know, so much of it about the woman's movement is about, you know, uh, uh, so much thought is out there that Christian women do not, They, I, I don't, I'm not trying not to get political, that's why I'm, 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 I'm pausing myself. But Christians, Christian women are not doormats, we're not Stepford wives, we're not blindly going through life saying, you know, I believe this, I believe that. We're women of faith that say, I believe in the sanctity of life because I believe it. I believe that everyone's valuable. Not because I'm brainwashed or poisoned, it's the same thing with these promises. If you believe that, oh, if you cheat on your husband or wife, you know, you're going to be happy. That's a junk promise. What makes us happy is living a righteous life. The Bible is alive. It was written 2,000 years ago, inspired by God. It is alive. We can read it today and find meaning in our everyday life. Jesus called himself the bread of life. And he also is the word. The Word became flesh. The Word is Jesus. He's the bread of life. We eat the Word. We go to communion. I mean, it's really part of our whole change. And what I say to people, start with the New Testament, one verse a day. There's a Bible by the side of my bed. I'm a very busy person, but every day I read a chapter from the Bible. And not just the chapter we're doing here at Pray It Off, a different chapter before you know it. The time goes by, there's John, there's Matthew, there's Luke, every day. And you can read it again next year, and it'll have different meaning because your life will be different. What, what you're going through at that time will make you look at this verse more or that verse more. So it's alive. Our tastes are conditioned by habits and wrong ways of thinking about food. We need to change our taste and our habits about food and also about reading the Bible. Our tastes change. I don't want fast food. I have no desire. I have not had fast food in 10 years. We haven't had McDonald's, we haven't had Burger King, we have had no fast food at all. I don't desire it, I don't want it. My tastes change. And it's the same thing about reading the Bible. It doesn't happen overnight. 
But if we read the Word of God, and I remember when Jessica got up here, and Jessica at Table One, who's done extremely well, her, her witness is very powerful to me because she's young. And so many of us, you know, we think, oh, we're old, we've lived our lives, you know, oh, uh, you know. And, and she's young, and she said, what it really has changed about me is the power of the Word of God and, and what the Word of God means in our life. And I heard that more about her testimony than I did even about her weight loss, because that has changed her life, given her hope, and, and propelled her forward. And I'm going to stop right there, Bobby.